This is Brockport Writers Forum. Good morning. We're very pleased to have with us today Derek Walcott. Our guest today is John Barth. Our guest today, Rita Dove. Welcome, Grace Paley, to Brockport. The writing of Isaac Bashevis Singer. The poetry of Robert Hayden. Our very special guest today, Lucille Clifton. Nadine Gortimer. The poetry of Anne Sexton. Today, the poetry of Seamus Heaney. Uh, I wonder if you'd like to read a section from the novel. Mumble Jumble? Yeah. Oh, right. sure. There's a section here. that goes for about a page and a half, and uh, chapter 24, and uh, the, the Jess Groove crisis is taking over America, and everybody's <laughs> dancing in the streets. And so they called on the government to, st to stamp it out. And uh, to, uh, and Harding is reluctant, you see, because I'm using the theory that's been promulgated that uh, Harding was a black man, was a Negro. And uh, you might be interested to know that when the Republican Party heard rumors that Harding was a Negro, they approached him. And he said, you know, this is going to ruin us. Uh, you know, are you a Negro? And Harding said, well, I don't know. One of my ancestors might have jumped across the fence back there somewhere, <laughs> you know. And so what happens is that Harding's kind of sympathetic <coughs> to Jess Grew, because, you know, he's, a, he's a Afro, a blood. And uh, so they're trying to stamp out this crisis where everybody's dancing and, you know, singing and, you know, all in the streets and it's all over the country and uh, the government breaks down. And so they, they uh, consult Irene Castle, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and who, the, the woman who introduced jazz to Park Avenue in the 20s, and they accept her, uh, her uh, uh, suggestions. So this is uh, chapter 24. After meeting with top aides, Attorney General Harry M. Doherty, Doherty faces the newsreel cameras and microphones. He reads recommendations in a bill to be sent to Congress, spelled with a K, a way of allaying the Jess Grew crisis, which threatens our national security, survival, and just about everything else you can think of. He adopts a plan based upon the ideas of Irene Castle, the woman who in 1915 inspired a generation of young women to cast aside their corsets and petticoats. He delivers a plague edict, pelvis and feet controls. One, do not wriggle the shoulders. Two, do not shake the hips. Three, do not twist the body. Four, do not flounce the elbows. Five, do not pump the arms. Six, do not hop, glide instead. Seven, drop the turkey trot, the grizzly bear, the bunny hug, etc. These dances are ugly, ungraceful, and out of fashion. From the bedroom of the White House, where he sits sipping whiskey, Warren Harding glares down at his attorney general. A mere mason, he is helpless to prevent what is about to take place. Raids on Washington speakeasies go on until dawn. No dancing signs of huge black letters and exclamation points are posted throughout the city. Anybody caught doing it, doing it, doing it is a federal crime. It has been a busy day for reporters following Jess Grew. The morning began with Dr. Lee DeForest, inventor of the three element vacuum tube, which helped make big time radio possible, collapsing before a crowded press room after he pleaded concerning his invention, now in the grips of Jess Grew. Quote, what have you done to my child? You have sent him out on the street in rags of ragtime to collect money from all and sundry. You have made him a laughingstock of intelligence, surely a stench in the nostrils of the gods of the ionosphere. 